Watch me first. I'm a big fan. Demo it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to do a few swings. I want you to pay attention to my form. Pay attention to my hips and how they're moving and anything else. Then I'll take any questions and then you're going to practice some and I would like you to make sure you're in a position where I can see you, okay? And I'll fly through the screen and I'll look for any faults. Before that though, I'll show you the most common faults. Everybody happy? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Good. Right, okay. Welcome everybody. It's Sunday Commando Boot Camp. In case you didn't know on live, I've just hit the record button. I'm not, I'm not repeating myself. Um, before I get into what the workout is, we're introducing kettlebells. I'm going to very, very quickly show you how to do kettlebells. Fantastic. Right, okay. Watch me first. Watch my form. Watch my technique. My breathing. You're going to hear my breathing. I'm not emphasizing my breathing just for the sake of the demo. This is how I should be breathing, okay? So I'll show you side on. Why? Because you can see exactly what's happening. Okay, so this spine, this spine of mine stays neutral. If you're watching this and you're warm, i.e. live people, I should not be seeing the feet still. Keep your feet moving. Or if you're down on your knees because you're on a tiny screen, do something, okay? Stay warm, okay? First thing I said yesterday, when you grip this kettlebell, you are not going for afternoon tea. Yep, see the grip I've got of it? It's solid. I'm trying to crush it, and I mean purpose. I'm not got my pinkies out because my hands feel nice and crushed, okay, and it's uncomfortable. I crush that thing with a solid grip. Get the web of the thumb in it and squeeze it. If you've got calluses or you've got those little tender bits, boo-hoo, okay? Don't hold it on your fingertips. Then all I'm doing, I'm keeping my nice proud chest, driving my toes into the ground. I'm pushing my hips back, okay? That's a down position. Look at my chest, it's up, it's not collapsed. Then I'm snapping my hips forward. Show you a few. Hips back, hips forwards. Hips back, hips forwards, okay? Big breath in, big breath out. It needs to be explosive. At the top, I should be squeezing my glutes. I should feel my glutes squeezed. Now, before you practice them, I'm going to show you a couple of common faults so you know and hopefully can identify if you're doing them. Common faults are, number one, people squat. They squat down and front raise. Squat down, front raise. There is absolutely no work Glutes, hamstrings, lower back, that's the engine behind this. They're not getting activated there. If I'm turning it into a squat and a front raise, I'm doing it wrong. Second fault, and again, you might have kind of some of these, you're doing little bits of both. Common fault is dropping the chest, collapsing the shoulders. See that upper back? See how it's all arched? It's not tight anymore. Again, what comes with that usually is you go far too far back. I see that too often as well. People go away back here. All you're going to do there is reach the limit of your back's flexibility. Then, okay, you're going to pull it out. All I want you to think about, squeeze the armpits as if you've got a penny under each one. Squeeze the penny in the armpits and that's going to limit you going back too far. So look how far back I go. It might not be is back as far as you think. But I get to a point when I'm here, hamstrings are lengthened out, glutes are lengthened out, lower back's lengthened out. It's like a catapult. Okay, practice them now. I want you side on so I can see and I'm just going to work from top to bottom. Okay, and I want you to swing. This is part of your warm up. Okay, so if you're the last person, you're out of luck. You go for it, Laura, you're top of the screen. Good, good hip snap. So remember, Whack! Snap the hips through. You should feel a distinct snap of the hips. Good. Trisha, good swing. You were at yesterday's class, of course. Karen, just focus on snapping the hips through. You've got the movement pattern perfect. Snap the hips more. Lynn, you're either holding the kettlebell like that. You're frozen. Good. Ah, you're looking good. Good, Joanne. Push the hips back. Snap them forwards more. Snap them forwards more. Snap. That's better. Good. Yep, Kevin, you're looking good. Of course you are. Cheryl, your kettlebell's invisible. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry if you don't have one, like I say. Good. That's us, Lee. Good. I want you to try, Lee, get that kettlebell up to eye level. Okay, if you're starting to get tired, have a wee rest. Lee, I want you to just get that kettlebell up to eye level. That's you. Good. So here's another point while everybody's resting. You're trying to get the kettlebell up to here. The kettlebell never comes to here because I've lifted it with my arms. Okay, it's the power in my hips. So I snap the hips, and by having a good grip of this kettlebell, it throws it up. When you're swinging your kettlebell, 
if you were to let your kettlebell go from this part, as in, as I snap my hips forward, if you let it go, that kettlebell should shoot forwards at a speed of knots, okay? It should not go up. So when you're swinging it, have a think. If I let it go, is it going forward? Or is it going to go up towards the sky? If it's going to go up towards the sky, you're not snapping the hips hard enough, you're lifting it with the arms. You get my point? So if I was lifting it with the arms, it would go up. If I was snapping it with my hips, it's going forwards. Swing, right? 30 seconds and we're starting. It's a ladder circuit, yep. Six exercise ladder circuits, so hopefully now everybody's excited because that's good. That's one of my favorite circuits, okay? We'll do an exercise one, which is a kettlebell swing, which you should now know how to do. Take your time. Don't go too heavy if you're new to it. Pick something light. Learn the movement pattern. Learn the technique. We're starting in 10 seconds. Grip that kettlebell solid. Kettlebell swings for 30 seconds, then 30 seconds rest, and I'll explain the rest to you. I'm going to be side on so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Good solid grip of my kettlebell. Stand by. Go. So it's all in the hips, hips go back, hips go forwards. It is not a front raise, I'm not lifting this kettlebell with my arms at all. When you snap the hips, you should feel a distinct snap, okay? You're squeezing the butt, keeping your chest up proud. And remember, on the swing, if you let that kettlebell go, it should go flying forwards, not up, okay? Push the hips back, relax, good. So when you're ready, you can go a bit heavier if you've got a heavier kettlebell, but be sensible. And that's your call. So that's 30 seconds rest. Now we go back to kettlebell swings again. Second exercise is press-ups. There's no rest this time until we've done our press-ups. So it's like a pickup circuit. We pick up a new exercise. 10 seconds and we begin. I'll always do my kettlebell swing side on, so if you're not sure, you can see. Three, two, one, go. Another point I'll give you, when you pick that kettlebell up to start your swings, don't be lazy. Pick it up with good form. As you're swinging, think about the feet. Are your toes getting driven into the ground? Because they should be. Is your chest up proud? Or are your shoulders collapsing? They shouldn't be. You should feel the weight's distributed evenly across the whole foot. Relax, straight into press-ups, let's go. Kneeling or full, whatever your technique allows. Now again, not everybody's got a kettlebell, so I do apologize, but of course, I'm sure you understand that I need to talk a lot of technique about it. Eventually, I'll shut my face, but I'm just gonna keep screaming points across, and hopefully someone Good. Okay. So, if you walked away halfway through that set to get your mat for your knees, you shouldn't be stopping when the buzzer goes. You should be making up for the time that you lost out on. I will not use your name, but you're lucky this time. Okay. So this time, back to kettlebell swings, then press ups, straight up, nice chill jumping jacks, everybody. Okay. So again, if you're not doing kettlebell swings, I'm going to show you what to do just to remind you so you're not left out. Go. So I'm touching my toes, I'm making a star, but I'm pulling my shoulder blades together, working that full posterior chain. Everybody else, get your swings done. Now you can hear my breathing. It's fast, it's powerful, it's explosive. Next exercise, press up, stand by. Straight down. Make sure you place that kettlebell down safely. Chest to the floor, not resting. Good technique, good form. Pull the floor towards your chest. Next exercise in 10 seconds is jumping jacks. Beat me to my feet. Go on, beat me. Don't be taking all day. Go up, on your feet, jumping jack. Straight away, come on, hurry up, faster than that. Good. Now, jumping jacks, explosive, powerful. Snap out, snap in. No this, no soft crap. Big, powerful jumps out and in. Nice and light on the toes. And breathe, okay? Okay. 
relax, walk around. 30 seconds, everybody, well done. Everybody feeling okay? Everybody all right? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> right, okay, in 15 seconds, we're back to kettlebell swings. This time, we're picking up kettlebell goblet squat thrusters, okay? So basically squatting down, punching up. Everybody else without a kettlebell, you'll be doing squat jumps. Stand by, get these kettlebells picked up. Look how I pick it up. Straight back, stand by, go. Make sure when press up buzzer goes, you don't just chuck the kettlebell down with an arch back, okay? If you're out in the grass, or you've got a rubber floor or something, feel free to just toss it away. But make sure you're not doing anything crazy with your spine or body. Place it down, good form. Push the hips back, snap them forward. I'm snapping them forward as if I'm trying to press up, go. So when you're snapping your hips forwards for a kettlebell swing, you literally are imagining that you're trying to snap yourself in half, everybody. But then what happens? You lock out, you squeeze the glutes hard, and that stops you anchoring them forwards, overextending. So you should feel the butt, yeah, stand by for jumping jacks, up on your feet, go. Quicker than that, everybody, come on. Push yourself hard, it's a six exercise ladder. Over and done with before we know it. Now this next one, you're either gonna do squat jumps if you don't have a kettlebell, or you're gonna hold it like a goblet squat, okay? And you're gonna do squat thrusters. I'll talk you through it. Make sure your technique's spot on, especially if you're starting to get tired now. Stand by, go. So I'm holding the kettlebell by the horns, I'm squatting, and then I'm using the squat to power the press. So I'm not really using my shoulders too much, why? Because the power comes from the hips. Snap the hips through. Don't let that chest collapse. Keep the chest up proud. Relax. Any questions on that one? So it's minimal work on the shoulders. The power comes from hips. You're starting to get the point now. Power technique. Technique comes from the power, okay? No, power comes from the technique. <laughs> right, stand by, kettlebell swings coming at you in five seconds, okay? Remember, pick it up properly. Go. You should be thinking, hips back, snap them forward. Snap them forward, even if your kettlebell's pretty light, snap them forward as if it's a lot heavier and that'll start to get the technique that you need. So I'm pushing my feet into the ground and I'm snapping the hips through and keeping that chest up. Press ups, go for it. Fuller on the knees. Either way, I'm keeping the control there. I'm keeping the form and quality high rather than just black reps out. If you can black reps out for 30 seconds, knock yourself out. But chances are, you kind of keep that going more. So technique, next exercise in three seconds, jumping jacks, wait for it. Faster, up, go. Come on everybody. Nice, that was a lot better. A lot quicker off the mark there. Good. So after these, we're straight into our goblet squat thrusters or squat jumps without a kettlebell. And again, it's so important, now that we're all starting to get tired and struggle to breathe, make sure your technique is spot on. Three seconds, wait for that buzzer. Pick that kettlebell up, stand by, go. Pick it up properly, grip it by the horns. Hold it chest tight. That was terrible. This is better. Forgot we were doing the squat, the squat thruster. So it's so important. People grip it light. And you're going to lose so much power by having a crap light grip. Next exercise, leg raises. Stand by. I want you to sit on your bum. Wait for it. 
Okay, go. So I'm sitting down, straight leg, up, down. <sighs> Tough exercise on the core. However, <sighs> let's get that breathing under control. <sighs> Getting a rest after this. So my legs, everybody, are straight as I can. Try not to, try to lift the feet while pushing the knees down. Let's go. <sighs> try not to rest the feet at the ground. Stop just a, well done. <sighs> Don't sit down. You will not recover quick enough. Get up on your feet, please. <sighs> right, this is it. The final ascent, okay? The last time you're gonna do kettlebell swings. So enjoy them. Everybody doing okay? You with it? Oh, good, good. Push it hard, okay? This is the longest round we'll do. Form technique up there. Five seconds, we should be starting to pick these up now. I'm gonna face you this time. Go. So the kettlebell is coming to eye level. How does it get there? Hip snap. Listen to my breathing. All out. It has to be short, powerful breath. Like I said yesterday, you go to the doctors and do those airflow tests where you have to blow into the tube as hard as you can in a wanna. That's what you're doing. Big breath in, all out. Press ups, go for it. Push it hard, everyone. The longest round. And then it just gets easier and easier after this. Jumping jacks, wait for it. Okay, be as quick as you can to your feet. Wait for the buzzer. Go, up on your feet. Let's do it. Yes, everybody. So your next exercise, kettlebell squat thrusters or jump squats. Three seconds, start thinking about that kettlebell. Where is it? I'm gonna pick it up, go. Pick it up, straight back. By the horns, grip it tight, chest tight. Think about the squat technique. Toes, drive them into the ground. Pull the knees apart. Good. Power it up. Remember, that hip snap is what lifts the kettlebell more. Leg raises, go, sit down, straight legs, lift them up as high as you can and down. Up, powerfully, down under control, up, powerfully, down under control. Nicely done. Really try your hardest, everybody, to keep those legs straight. I'm still seeing a lot of this. Straight legs, push the knees down, lift the feet. Tough, eh? Next exercise. Burpees, stand by, go, straight up, burpee out, stand up, jump up, all out, flat out. Push it hard everybody, you're getting rest after these. Just keep throwing yourself into the next rep. Walk around. So if your heart rate is sky high, lungs are burning, muscles feel like they're on fire. Good, okay. Don't be put off by that. There really isn't much point training comfortably, but you know that by now. Five seconds, press ups. Three, get down. Come on, what are we waiting for? Two, one. Push it, go. So this is us going back down the ladder and we're dropping off the first exercise each time now. So no more kettlebell swings. Next exercise, jumping jacks. Get ready for the transition. You've got 12 seconds. Stand by. 
up on your feet, go. Breathe. Get that breathing under control. Okay, so this is where cardio wise, it gets pretty tough because we always end on burpees and we don't really get a chance to recover from them too much, as you can hear. But try your best. Keep that control, breathing going on. Try not to pant. Three seconds, goblet squat thrusters. Go, get it picked up safely by the horns, chest height, set the feet up and go. Good grip, don't have a relaxed grip. Snap the hips, make sure your squat form is perfect. If you feel your back arch, your kettlebell's too heavy. Okay, leg raises. I forgot what it was there. No. Fine tune it. Okay, keep the legs straight. Try not to let the heels touch. That's more advanced. Beginner. You might have to. But when I say have to, I literally mean you have to. You don't have a choice. Okay, you're not putting your feet down because it's tough. You're putting your feet down because you can't do another one. Have that discipline. Okay, burpees on your feet. First one, go. Push it hard. Seems like we're far from the end, but you know now, hey, we're really not. Each round now gets shorter and easier. It just doesn't feel it. 30 seconds rest after this, earn it. Okay, walk around. Not much more to say, really. Get the breathing under control. So if you feel like this is kicking your arse more than normal, you'll be surprised how much just adding new exercise patterns. But not only that, weight. How big a difference that'll make when you're not used to it. Jumping jacks in five. Okay, straight in. Three, two, one, go. Come on, come on. Last time we do these now. Again, these kettlebell squat thrusters. Make sure at the bottom of your squat, your chest isn't collapsing. If it is, you're either not keeping it tight enough and proud, or that kettlebell's too heavy. Pull the knees apart, drive the toes into the ground. Three, two, go. Do it right, everybody. If it means slowing it down, slow it down. So I'm keeping it up, chest height. Don't let it drop, common mistake. You see that? People's arms get tired and they do that. It's wrong. Chest tight always, punch it. Chest tight, down, punch it. Okay, let's go. Leg raises. Straight legs, down under control. Power up, down under control. Well, nearly there, everybody. We really are. Only three exercises on the next run through. Then two, then one, then done. So don't ease out now. Burpees. I want you getting your first rep done five seconds after that buzzer's gone. As in straight up, stand by, go. Up on your feet, stand up, straight down. Jump. Faster, come on. Remember, throw yourself into that first rep. Don't think too much about it. And you might just find yourself continuing that for the 30 seconds. But if you stop for a breather before that first burpee, chances are you'll constantly be stopping for breathers that you don't really need. You think you do, but you probably don't. Relax, now you get a breather. A breather that you've earned, hopefully. Now remember, don't walk around. Don't walk around hyperventilating. Control that breathing. Control that breathing, everyone. Okay, kettlebells to hand. 10 seconds, goblet squat thrusters. The last ones that we're gonna do, stand by. Three, start picking it up. Two, one, go. 
proud chest. Don't let it collapse. Pull the knees apart. Snap the hips. Drive the toes. Always. Never stop driving those toes. And hopefully you can feel that difference. If you're wearing big cushiony trainers, you might not. Big breath in on the way down. On the way up. Leg raises. Let's go. Straight legs. Push the knees down. Up powerfully. Down under control. Try not to let the feet rest as much as you can possibly handle. Sure it might be burning. But can you do another one? Then do it. Next exercise. Burpees in five seconds. I want you. Take my advice. No matter how much you're blown out. Throw yourself into that first rep. Up on your feet, stand up and down. You'll surprise yourself, I really think you will. I'm not saying it's easy, oh no. But you might not have to keep taking that breather that you thought you did. Just push it one more rep. Always. Go 10 seconds. So close to the end now. Why hold back? Why? Okay, big breath in, big breath out. Two more run throughs, only two exercises in this one. Hopefully you're feeling good. Mentally, I mean physically. Hopefully you're dragging your knuckles like I am. Okay, leg raises next. Five seconds, three, two, one, go. Remember, that buzzer is the start buzzer. That does not mean start getting set up. It means do the first rep. No. Legs straight. Next exercise, burpees. This is the last time you're gonna do these leg raises. Let's get them done. Burpees, stand by. Go, up, first rep, God, they were hard. They were tough there. Felt like the longest 30 seconds ever. Push it, come on. Work with me here. Land it, one more rep. Good, come on. Five seconds. Don't stop until that buzzer stops you. Walk around. <clears throat> well, everybody, it's the last one. The last set of ladder. Burpees in 15 seconds. I don't want you pacing yourself. I don't want you holding back because when that buzzer goes after this, you're finished for the day. Three, two, one, go, come on. Big jumps, no stopping. Push it hard, get it finished. Empty the tank, your tank. Walk around. Walk around, even if you don't have room to walk around. Walk in circles. I want you to take a big breath in through the nose, pause at the top. Empty the lungs once. Empty them a second time, pause, then take a breath in again. Put your hands on your chest, pull your shoulder blades apart, sorry, together. And that's gonna help open everything up. Keep the chin up, open up the airway. and just chill out, but don't sit down. Do not stop, walk around, come on. Big breath. Again, like I keep saying, hyperventilating might feel good, but it's not doing anything for your recovery. Struggle through those first few recovery breaths. And you'll find your heart rate goes down pretty damn quick. Okay, everybody, well done. 
Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that as much as that did. Okay, now again, we're introducing kettlebells gradually. The kettlebell swing is at the heart of pretty much all of them. Okay, you start doing single arm swings, you start doing alternative swings, you start doing clean and press, you start doing snatches. That is a kettlebell swing at heart. You need to master that hip hinge, that hip hinge, before you even think about moving away from the kettlebell swing, before you even think about picking a weight up that's challenging for a kettlebell swing, you need to master that, okay? Before you go, if you are new to them, I want you to, no kettlebell involved, find a mirror, a wardrobe mirror works perfectly because it's tall and thin. I want you to stand side on, pretty much imagine that that camera, well, the screen you're looking at now is my mirror. I'm standing side on. I've got my knees soft, set up as I would for a kettlebell. I'm gonna keep my chest nice and proud. I'm gonna push my hips back. This is where you're gonna learn how to do it because some people don't have the coordination to, to be able to keep in form, okay? And that's not bad. It looks simple, look at it. Looks simple, right? It's actually very coordinated. There's a lot to think about. I've gotta think about pushing my whole hip unit back at once. I've gotta think about keeping my knees soft and not letting them bend excessively. I've gotta think about keeping my upper chest from dropping. Okay, and then I've got to think about breathing and then a kettlebell involved. So you can see why it starts to become quite complicated if you throw yourself in at the deep end. So again, at home, in your own time, sounds sad. I know some of you will not do it, but I encourage you, if you're feeling like you need improvement, do it. Even if you're thinking that you're good, do it. So I'm side on, I push my hips back, I push them back, I push them back. I can see in that mirror, is my back straight? Yes. Yep. Are my knees slightly bent? Yes. Are they excessively bent? Mm, no. Key point is your hip bone should always be above your knee bone. If that hip goes below or in line with, you've turned it into a squat, you've loaded up the quads, hamstrings aren't loaded, glutes aren't loaded properly, and uh, lower back isn't loaded properly. That's a no-no. Okay? So this is where you'll find some people usually struggle um, to keep the back straight. So they end up like this, and I'll be like, get your back straight, and you can't, you can't work out the movement to make your back straight, you can't work that out. Okay, it sounds daft, but it does take a wee bit of thought and to get in touch with yourself before you can learn to do that, lift the chest up, okay? So that's why I encourage you, practice side on. Go down, go down, go down. Is it perfect? No, I'm gonna keep doing it. Little and often, okay? Again, little and often. I said to people yesterday, if you're trying to learn to play a new piece on the piano, okay, sounds daft. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna press two keys at once. You're gonna press the wrong key. You don't just sit there for endless hours and you get better, do you? You get to a point where you're better than when you started, but then you end up maybe getting worse. Little, often, okay? Repetition, repetition, and again, you'll know if it's too heavy. If that kettlebell's taking you for a ride and you feel like it's swinging you about, it's too heavy, everybody, okay? That is me done. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, I do take form and technique seriously. Um, it's hard when we're doing it on live. If you're watching recording, obviously I can't keep an eye on you. I just hope you've got the discipline um, to break yourself in gently. Even if you think you know it all, fine tune it. Look for areas of improvement. Don't just throw around the heaviest kettlebell you can find because you think it's awesome. Okay? What's not awesome is when you're out for the count for weeks with a sore back. Okay? Thank you very much. If you haven't done kettlebells before, just from the kettlebell swings that we've done, you might well feel that your lower back, your butt, your hamstrings are sore. When you've got sore muscles everywhere, usually it feels good, doesn't it? But for some reason, when people get a sore lower back muscles, sorry, sore lower back muscles, they think that they've pulled their back out. If your back feels tight, the same way your arms would feel tight if you were doing loads of pull-ups or whatever, it's the same, it's still a muscle group. It's gonna be fatigued from everything that we've been doing today, not just kettlebell swings. So make sure when you wake up, if you are feeling a bit stiff and sore, do, do our three mobility uh, movements. Your downward dog, your cobra thing, the tuck in the chin in. Do your mobility squats. Do that before you start lifting heavy things up. That's my final point to you, okay? You shouldn't be pulling your lower back out doing this stuff, but it might be a little bit tender the next day like a worked muscle group would be. Just be sensible when you're moving about if you're stiff. That's it from me. I am finished now. Have a good day and thank you for coming.